it's funny when you know somebody just from uh, theory. He, I mean, he's always in your life because he was the former singer, and I had to sing his song. Uh, his songs always make me struggle. Always had not an easy life by, with singing his songs because he's just too good. <laughs> so, uh, and uh, what I mean, I mean, he's always been there with me, even that, even though I did not know him personally. I mean, okay, we had a hello, how are you doing? That was the only thing we had, like back in 1990. We did not know each other. And personally, and I know that I always was in Michael's mind as um, all that guy who is now singing, he, he stole my job, blah, 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 which is not true. I did not steal his job, actually. I was just asked to join because Michael was already gone. So I never felt like robbing or stealing a job because Waiki was actually say good, saying goodbye to him. Um, I think four days before he gave me a call and told me now you finally go to Hamburg to meet with us and join this band now. Otherwise, we, I, I break up this band. That's that were his words. And I said, oh, well, OK, um, as as always, he has smelled that there was something wrong with pink cream. So we had lots of trouble back exactly to the same time. So I said, you know what, I'm I'm coming up to Hamburg. I take the train tomorrow, I make you listen to my demos, and, and then I decide. And, uh, well, to cut a long story short, I think Michael and I, we always had ourselves in a weird way, uh, parallel in our life, always, whatever we did. There was this asshole Andy who, who in, in Michael's eyes, stole his job. And there was this Michael in my back in my mind, which I always was reminded with each and every tone I had to sing on I Want Out or Future World or Eagle Flat Free or you name them. And I always had a hard time. But I never made a secret out of it. I told everybody in the press through all the decades that this is one of the best singers I've ever I've ever heard in the in the world. And I will never try to copy him because how could you ever reach one of the greatest singers in that style? I can only lose. So I never tried to copy him. And that probably saved my neck. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, just, I just sang the way I felt, like singing like Andy. For a lot of people, it probably been uh, disappointing when, when they wanted to listen to Michael Kiska songs, and certainly it's an Andy voice over it. Certainly, it's a different interpretation, but you have to live with it in that point of view that I did not like to copy a guy who's definitely way better in that way of singing than I will ever be. And Michael says, says the same to the people now, said he would never like to sing Andy songs because he just couldn't, period. It's too hard, it's too out of the stomach, too much rock and roll, and that's not Michael's style. And probably that's the reason that we from beginning on realized, well, that blends perfectly. And he does not need to sing the shit he doesn't want to sing. That's my job. <laughs> and I, I, don't have, I don't have to sing all these Michael Kiske tunes, which always gave me a hard day. Perfect, perfect combination, actually. But there you go. We've always been together the, the last 20 or 30 years. Um, not in a positive and not in a negative way. Actually, it, it was just you've been in each each other's life and suddenly you're there and have a, a, the time to sit down and the chance to sit down and get to know yourself like eye to eye. And you realize, wow, that ghost that was always with me is a real person and I like that idea. <laughs> so <laughs> you go like, OK, that's weird. So uh, I remember we were here in Tenerife on the island, and in two or three days, we were actually like little brothers. And I was super happy and, and excited to let him know all my little places that I like. And each and every place I show him, I realized he falls in love with it. So, which means you have a completely common ground. He loves what I love. I love what he loves, and which is great to see. And a little bit sad because of so many years lost where you actually could have had a friend. 
but because of the circumstances, it, it was always more or less impossible in the beginning. Because he's Michael Kiske, I'm Andy Darius, and the band Halloween did not want to have him anymore. And I only knew the stories from Michael Wyckoff and from Marcus Groskopf in the beginning, which I know is always only 50%, and, but I never had a chance to listen to the other 50% of Michael Kiske's side to decide for myself who is wrong, who is right, or was there wrong and right, or was it just two idiots or three idiots who, who couldn't stand each other anymore? I don't know, you know. I've witnessed the same shit in my band, and I'm, I was always ready to say, look, I mean, it's always 50-50. I would never say, you asshole, because probably I made some mistakes, and it's always 50-50. That's what I think. 